Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions, my name's Chris, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Raspberry Pi 400 Personal Computer Kit. And this is actually a really good idea from Raspberry Pi. Essentially, this is a Raspberry Pi 4 inside like a keyboard case, and they've moved all the ports for the Raspberry Pi 4 out to the back of the unit. So, really nice little kit, comes with a mouse, keyboard, all you gotta do is plug in power, plug in a monitor, and you basically have a little personal computer. You don't have to worry about anything else. So let's go ahead and get this thing unboxed and see what comes inside. Oh, there we go, look at that. So starting off nice with our keyboard. This is the whole thing basically. Nice and light and compact. Let's take a look at some of these ports. Here we have the GPIO pins the micro SD card slot. Now it comes with a 16 gig micro SD card preloaded with the Raspbian operating system. Then we have our two HDMI ports. These are micro HDMI. Interestingly though, they don't label which one's which. So I'm just gonna assume the one on the left here is the primary. Then we have USB type C power, two USB 3.0 ports, one USB 2.0 port, and then our ethernet port right here. Looks like there's also a uh, Kensington lock uh, port right here. And that's really all there is to it. I mean, this is a, I mean, it's a nice feeling keyboard. All right, let's see what else we have in here. All right, so here we have a USB type C power supply. And then we have the official Raspberry Pi mouse. There we go, Raspberry Pi mouse. Also in the kit we have this book. This is the official Raspberry Pi beginner's guide. And wow, this is a pretty large book. Looks to be about uh, close to 250 pages, how to use your new computer. Sweet, love it. We also have a micro SD card reader, and that's it. All right, so let's talk about the specs of the Raspberry Pi 400 itself. Uh, it has four gigs of RAM. So essentially it's the Raspberry Pi 4 with four gigs of RAM. That means it's a quad core 64 bit CPU at 1.8 gigahertz. Uh, it does have wireless card inside as well as uh, you know the, the ethernet port right here. I'm not sure if that's gigabit ethernet or not. And it does have the dual display output. So you could hook up two monitors to this thing. And it says that it can do uh, 4K video playback. But in my testing, uh, it stutters a little bit at 4K. So I probably wouldn't recommend using this as like a, you know, a 4K media PC or something. You're not gonna have a good time with that. Uh, but if you wanted to watch regular YouTube videos and things like that, I've run it just fine with multiple 1080p YouTube videos, uh, you know, one on each monitor, and that has worked fine for me with the Raspberry Pi 4. So this actually also comes with a three foot micro HDMI to HDMI cable. Uh, I thought they forgot it in my packaging, but uh, I looked at it a little bit closer and found it. It was kind of tucked away inside some of the cardboard. So we're gonna start by plugging in the micro, whoop, there goes the power cable. We're gonna plug in the micro HDMI, and then we're gonna plug it into this monitor over here. Next, let's go ahead and connect up the official Raspberry Pi mouse. And now we're gonna plug in the power. Now I don't see a power switch, so just like the Raspberry Pi, I think it powers on the second you plug it in, and it looks like that's the case. I saw the power light turn green, and there you can see that it is green. So it should have a default installation of Raspbian. We'll see what it actually boots up with. Resized root file partition, re rebooting in five seconds. So yeah, it looks like they basically just took Raspbian and flashed it onto that micro SD card and that's what we're starting out with. All right, there we go. We have welcome to the Raspberry Pi desktop and then we're gonna go through the wizard. So let's go ahead and go through the startup wizard for Raspberry Pi. We're gonna say next, uh, enter the details about your location. We're gonna say United States and then we wanna use English language and US keyboard. We're gonna say next. All right, now it wants us to change the default password. By default, it's Pi user, and then the password is Raspberry, but we're gonna put in a strong password here. Keyboard feels pretty nice to type on. And then this is asking us about the black bars around the screen. So basically, if we 
Uh, check the box saying that it does show black bars around the screen. The next time it reboots, those black bars will no longer be there. It's gonna resize the screen here. All right, since I did not plug this into ethernet, it's looking for wireless networks and it has found our wireless network. We're gonna log into that. I'll put this on my IoT network. Okay, it wants to update now. We're gonna skip updating for now because that's gonna take a while. Your Raspberry Pi is now set up and ready to go and we're gonna click restart. And just that easily, we're up and running with the Raspberry Pi 4. Now at this point, you could use this to start learning about coding. You could learn this, you could use this just as like an email and web surfing machine. It would work perfectly fine for that. Uh, and yeah, MSRP on the, on the Raspberry Pi 400 is $100 for the kit that I have here. So I'll put a link down below to where you can buy that kit. I mean, for a hundred bucks, I mean, who, what like, you know, I, I always think about Raspberry Pis uh, as myself as a teenager. Like if I was 14, 15, 16 years old, man, I would have loved to have Raspberry Pis back then just to be able to learn computers, learn some basic coding, uh, you know, control stuff with the GPIOs and like all the stuff that you can do with a Raspberry Pi. It's just such an amazing learning platform. Uh, and this is a really nice form factor for that learning platform. I don't know if you can see, uh, but those black bars around the monitor are now gone. And basically, yeah, we're good to go. We're off and running. Let's go to the internet. There we go. Let's go to uh, YouTube Crosstalk Solutions. All right, click on videos. Let's bring up my most recent video. We'll put it into full screen here and see how it looks. So you can see it is a little bit sluggish, but once it gets going, it's totally fine. This is currently playing back in 720p. Let me bump it to 1080. Oh, now it's 10. There we go. 1080p HD. And we're going to go full screen. And so as you can see, playback at 1080p full screen is perfectly fine for the Raspberry Pi 400. It's a little sluggish, you know, getting there, you know, compared to a standard desktop PC. But if this is all you have, like this is, this is great. This is a great little product. All right, so there you have it. There's a look at the Raspberry Pi 400. And again, just as a learning tool, learning Raspberry Pi or, you know, giving this to someone that might wanna, you know, just keep it in their bag for when they need a computer on the go. I mean, I can think of a thousand different uses for this thing. I think this is a really good idea. Plus, it's not a, it's much friendlier for a beginner than the actual Raspberry Pi, which is basically just a bare circuit board that you're connecting everything to, and then you gotta find a case for it, and you gotta blah, 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 right? So. The fact that this comes all in one as a keyboard with the mouse and you just plug in power, you plug in the monitor and you're done. Yeah, that's just awesome. I love this thing. Raspberry Pi 400, check it out. Links below. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please click subscribe. My name's Chris with Crosstalk Solutions and thank you so much for watching.